you know, when I first became chair today, and they say you're the first African American, uh, I was like, that can't be true. It's not like I grew up thinking, oh, Mr. Jones is the chairman of this law firm, and one day I want to be like Mr. I mean, I didn't have that experience. I just want to be the best damn lawyer I can be. When I walk into a room, I want people to know I'm not coming to play. I'm coming to represent my client. My name is John W. Daniels, Jr. I'm Chairman Emeritus of Quarles & Brady, a law firm that has a national presence. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama in 1948. I did start my formal education in a legally segregated school. I can distinctly remember when I was probably 12 or 13, getting on a bus and sitting where I thought I could sit. and. My uh, uncle said, well, you can't quite sit here. That was the first time that it sort of like occurred to me that there was something different about this environment. My family moved to Milwaukee in the mid-50s, part of the Great Migration. So this is actually where I grew up. Right here is the high school that I went to. I was probably a nerd. I was a, a debater. There was a woman who was the first African-American elected to statewide office. Her name was Vel Phillips. So there was this major contest where different cities would pick out youngsters that they thought were the very best speakers. 25 years or so before me, she won it. You roll the calendar years forward, and the group says, hey, we got another Val Phillips. She's a legend, she's a lawyer. It sort of occurred to me that maybe there's some things I can do. So I graduated from Harvard in 1974. Other than the normal law school grind, I felt very comfortable there. He was a third year law student, my first year at the Harvard Law School. He was thoughtful, he was uh, mature. He was kind of like the older brother I never had. My wife always knew she wanted to come back to the Midwest. My family was here, so Milwaukee won. I came straight to Corals and Brady. There were not many African-American attorneys practicing in the private sector, and certainly few, if any, in big law. You could count them virtually on one hand. No, it, it didn't bother me to be the first person. That didn't bother me a lick. What I was most interested in was, are there people in this firm who are going to treat me as a friend and a colleague? When you thought of leading real estate lawyers in America, uh, John, and he was always at the top of the list. There were people who established a beachhead, if you will, at various firms across the country in Washington, Chicago, uh, Milwaukee, in John's case, uh, over the course of time, uh, we saw change. What you don't know until you are really chair is how you communicate your vision and your chemistry in a way that resonates with the people who you want to be part of the team. I just fundamentally believe that organizations that inspire that kind of trust are just, they're more vibrant. He oversaw the firm during the Great Recession, which was a scary time for everybody. We grew significantly in Chicago. He helped us start our DC office. That's sort of John's hallmark, is to be able to see opportunities where others would not see it. Hey, Squeaky. How are you? How are you? Good, how are you? 
squeaky this I helped create something called MK Fellows, which is a, a design to uh, have African-American men. We identify them in high school, follow them through college, follow them into the, their professional careers. I'm not shy about the notion that I believe in equity. I think it is essential to improving the way lawyers operate. I don't think you can overestimate what it means to people to see leaders that look like them. I think that has a huge impact on particularly younger lawyers, the staff. If you were to measure law firms that hired African-American lateral partners into the firm, John would be at the top of that list. His has been a life of service, and his has been a life that can be measured by the Jackie Robinson standard of the impact it has had on other lives.